Today on Chuck's Garage, Chuck Hansen continues his LS engine swap on a budget by tackling the cooling system. Hey, welcome back to Chuck's Garage and another installment of our LS engine swap into a classic Chevelle chassis. Now what we're going to be working on this week is the cooling system and to get things going I've already bolted up a core support that I had laying around here. It's for a 70 Chevelle, um, but uh, I had it powder coated to make it look pretty. And the next thing we're going to do is set our radiator in place. Now let me show what we're going to be working with today. Now, believe it or not, sciencing out the cooling system for this LS engine swap was one of the toughest parts of this whole project. And it wasn't because there was a shortage of product. In fact, it was just the opposite. There are so many different options for cooling systems out there that we almost became confused with all of the options we had. But this is what we came up with. This comes from DeWitt's radiators, and it's, a, it's an aluminum radiator, as you can see, and it's part of, their, um, part of their original fit series here, which means this thing's going to drop right in place of the original radiator. The spacing uh, for the tanks, the size of the tanks, all that stuff is going to allow you to drop it right in place of the original uh, radiator on that stock uh, core support there. But here's a lot of what we really looked at, and this is what makes the difference. So the LS engine comes with a lot of different connections for the cooling system and our Tahoe um, has the truck water pump on it still. So we wanted to look at keeping our uh, coolant connections as short as possible. So we decided to get a radiator with the upper bung located on the passenger side of the tank and also the, uh, the inlet is on the passenger side of the tank. Now here's something else cool about this DeWitt's radiator here. It also comes with a thermal switch already installed, and this is going to, use to, uh, is going to be used to control the fans. And here's the little bung for the uh, steam hose fitting. Now, we also went ahead and popped for their electric cooling fan option. They use Spall dual 11 inch fans here, and uh, we've used Spalls before, great product. And uh, to really dress things up, we popped for the additional uh, billet covers for the back of the fans. And finally, for the billet uh, radiator cap, that's going to look really nice on there. Now you might remember that I said this DeWitt radiator is a part of their direct fit series and of course it's made from aluminum. But one of the things I also wanted to tell you about is they also furnace braze this core into the tanks here, not epoxy like some of the other radiators out there. That's going to give you a strong radiator that uh, also carries a lifetime warranty. Oh, one more thing before I slip this thing into the uh, core support there. It, we ordered ours in this natural aluminum finish, but if you want a more of an OE look, well, you can get them in black too. Since this is a direct fit radiator, we're able to use the original GM uh, rubber isolation mounts here in the bottom of the core support. So with those in place, we're ready to set the radiator in, just like that. And then once the radiator is in place, we can go ahead and hold it in, uh, in position with this factory top radiator support, again, using the rubber mounts from the OE application. Now, the next problem that we had to solve was connecting the engine to that radiator. And believe it or not, I just kind of looked at this relationship here and I go, you know what, the LS, in the Tahoe hooks up in about the same way as this situation here. So what I did was I ordered a lower radiator hose for a 2003 Tahoe, slipped it in place, and believe it or not, that's about all we had to trim off the end of it there. And as you can see, it just slips right in place. Nice, really nice. Now, the top one though was a different story. I got a little trick. I'm gonna show you how to figure all that out. So finding an upper radiator hose that would work wasn't quite as simple as hooking up the bottom hose there, but here's a little trick that I used to help me get where I needed to go. I took an old coat hanger and uh, cut it basically to length here. And then what I did was I stuck one end in the outlet here and just kind of bent it so it would clear all the accessories and ended up over here at the inlet on the radiator. So what I did then was I took this piece of wire and I went down to my local auto zone. And I said, hey guys, um, I need a hose that looks like this. And they, uh, they pointed me to the back room and said, hey Chuck, have at it. So what I came up with was a Deco. I don't know what the application is, but I do have the hose and I have the hose number. Now this thing was really close. All I had to do, one end of it was swelled a little bit. 
So I cut that end off, still gave me the shape that I needed, and then I had to trim the other end off just a little bit as well. Once I had that done, man, this thing went right on there just like it was made for it. Plenty of clearance around the accessories, and uh, we'll go and, uh, and get some of those squeeze clamps like what came on the original application, and we're going to be good to go. Now the steam hose connection, again, we went back to our old parts source here. This hose actually came off that Tahoe uh, application there, and uh, goes right on that lower nipple there, and we're going to let it follow the upper radiator hose and hooks right into uh, this end over here by the cylinder head. Now we'll just slip the original clamp back in place here, get it secured on this end. And we'll use some zip ties and secure that steam hose to the upper radiator hose. And we're in business. Now, some of you sharp-eyed viewers out there are probably wondering right now, what are you guys going to do with those two outlets that normally feed the heater? Well, what, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, uh, and find a cap that'll fit on these here. We'll just cap them off for the time being until we're going to get the uh, body set down and then we'll put them to the use that they were originally intended for. But right now we're just going to cap them and uh, we'll get to them later. I got to get the right sizes so I can get to the store to get the right caps. Some of you guys are probably wondering why I didn't order a uh, radiator with a transmission cooler already in it. Here's the reason why. Um, not only uh, is this cooler from Permacool going to be able to cool the transmission, but it also has fittings to cool the power steering as well. Now, because we plan on autocrossing this car at some point down the road, autocrossing puts a lot of heat into the hydraulic steering system there, and this cooler is really going to take that heat out of it and increase the longevity of our power steering system. Same way with the trans cooler. This thing is rated up to, uh, up to 10,000 GVW, and it's going to have plenty of cooling capacity for our transmission. And uh, like I say, it's got an integral fan in it. Uh, I went ahead and ordered a thermo switch to control the fan, and I went ahead and popped for their heavy-duty mounting brackets here. Um, I think the next thing we need to do is find a suitable location to mount this cooler. You know, there's a lot to think about when you're trying to find a location to mount your cooler. And um, a couple of the things that I used for my criteria was I wanted to keep the hookups fairly short, fairly straight, fairly simple. I also needed to have a location where there would be plenty of uh, cool air, not too close to a heat source, and a place that would be fairly easy to fab up the mounting brackets. So I got a lot of suggestions from friends of mine everywhere. <laughs> Everybody wanted to mount it towards the back where there'd be good uh, flow, either that or up in the front. Uh, out back, too long a connection up front, then the packaging up in the front of the engine is just too tight. So I called up our friends at Permacool and sought their uh, suggestion on that, and they came up with this one. Um, why not mount it to the cross member just like this? It's fairly uh, removed from a heat source there. Uh, we'll have plenty of room for the fan to blow the uh, cool air through there. And like I say, the cross member gives us a mounting location there. And this gusset right here for the frame will give us an opportunity to create another bracket here to support the back end of the cooler. Then our hookups are fairly short to the transmission and to the power steering. And well, we really appreciate them for giving us that good suggestion here. I guess we better get busy fabbing up those mounts. After measuring the center to center distance between the brackets, we came up with three and a half inches. So we transfer that dimension to the cross member, and then we can go ahead and drill it. Then we can thread the holes using the screws that we plan to mount the cooler. All right, now before we go ahead and dummy up the rear mounting bracket, so I went ahead and shortened up these front ones Got them to the length that they need to be. Man, I'm up there one more time. Now to hold up the back end of the cooler here, what we did was fab the a small L bracket using some leftover pieces from the other uh, brackets that we used on the front end of this thing. Got a self-tapping screw here. Get the 
this last screw tightened up here. And we are good. Got a hole. Well, we've done a pretty good bit of work today. In fact, what we've done is we've mounted our cooling system, our electric fans, the core support. Got a mount uh, situated here for our transmission and power steering cooler. And, um, well, I'm gonna have to plumb that later on. But before I leave you today, there's one more piece of business that I wanna show you. You may recall that um, in the past, I mounted a temporary fuel delivery system, a holly pump and a couple of filters there so that we could get this thing up and running without using that tank's ink tank that we had ordered. We plan on running things out of a fuel cell instead. But um, since then, I've had a chance to kind of rethink that program. And thanks to some feedback from you guys on YouTube and stuff, um, what I've decided to do is I went ahead and turned the fuel pump and filters back in to the speed shop, got a refund, and uh, got my money back. Now, what I used that money on was a complete tail pan, trunk pan assembly here, from Auto Metal Direct down in Georgia. Now, the reason I did that was because I wanted to go ahead and mount up that tank that we got from Tanks Inc. Now, this is a one-piece pan made out of heavy gauge steel, just like the originals were. But here's what's really gonna make this thing work for me. Underneath here, you see that Auto Metal has uh, also included all the bracing that's needed. It also includes the tank mounting locations here and uh, the stiffeners and everything that we need. It's got the mounts and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount that tank's ink tank on here and then we'll throw the whole pan on the body there. And I'll plumb it when I get the rest of that stuff done and we'll be in business. Now this is some really nice stuff. Nice piece here and uh, we just lay it down. Now what that's gonna allow us to do is actually put the tank in inverted like that and uh, let me go get that tank and we'll get it mounted up. Now, since I anticipated mounting this thing up today, what I did was I went ahead and installed the fuel pump and the center units in there like I showed you before. Um, this is all ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the tank in here upside down, find its sweet spot right there and then the tank ink, uh, tank straps that came with this kit, we'll just put them in place too. Tighten those up with a ratchet and we'll be good. Now, before we can mount that tail pan, we've got to use some body mounts that uh, isolate it from the frame itself. So here's where they go, right back here in the corner, just like that. Put that on there temporarily bolt goes down through there. We got four of them back here. We'll set the pan on there and then we'll go ahead and secure it. Well, the last piece that we have for this fuel tank puzzle is the fuel filler neck and of course that comes with it from Tanks Inc. Slips over the uh, filler hole like that. There we go. We tighten up the clamps and well we're pretty good. So that about wraps it up for today. Um, we're, at a, we're kind of at a work stoppage here. Now next time I see you I'm gonna go ahead and uh, have the whole uh, cooling system plumbed, the fuel system plumbed, the um, transmission and uh, power steering systems will be plumbed and uh, well then we're going to try and wire it and fire it 
Wish us luck. We'll see you here soon.